Hello everybody, Molly here. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Um, I wanted to share with you a card that I just recently made and I've got all the parts cut and the measurements and all so we can make one together if you want. And what it is is a card that I cased from a Pinterest find and the original card on it was, it says created by Heather playing with papercrafting.com. I want to show you her card so bad but I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. Uh, but if you go to my Pinterest uh, Stampin' Up! board, you'll see it posted on there. Or if you look Created by Heather and look under Petal Palette, I think you'll find it. But her card is beautiful. Now, she made a traditional A2 card. You know, you take an 8.5 sheet of paper by 11, cut it in half, score it in half, so you end up with a card 5.5 by 4 and a quarter. Now, my card, I've done a um, 7 by 5. Like the bigger cards, you'll probably see me doing more of them. I know it's easier to use those half sheets but I just like a bigger card. And I just thought this um, technique that we're going to do, I love it, and I want to show as much of it as I could. So what I've done is I've got the parts cut here for you. So let me walk you through what we've done. And then as you can see here, it's just white embossing on watercolor paper, and then I used brush also on this one. Now I did make a second card just to play with the technique. And see, I like the white embossing on here. But I used the, where you just um, use your acrylic blocks to apply color. And so I did that one. Like how that one came out too. Just as a note, this is Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape and Cabana. Uh, let's see what it's called. It's, it's not Cabana Blue. Coastal Cabana. I love those new colors coming out. So just keep your eye open for those. But anyway, let's get back to the original card. Okay. What I've done here with the black cardstock, I've cut, let me take this out, I've cut a sheet that is 7 inches tall by 10 inches wide, scored at 5 inches. So 10 inches by 7, scored at 5, and you end up with this card base. I've cut two sheets of uh, Whisper White paper, and they are 6 and 7 eighths, yes, that's just an eighth of an inch smaller, by 4 and 7 eighths. So you're going to leave just a little bitty border around the edge. I cut two of those, one for the inside and one to use on the front. The second thing was on the card that um, she used, she used a white ground print with black flowers on it. I'm using a black ground print with white uh, stems on it. This is actually left over from a Christmas paper, but you, if you can find a black and white print in your stash, it'll work. This one is cut just an eighth of an inch smaller than um, the one before it. So it is six and three quarters by uh, four and three quarters. That leaves you just a nice little border there. And then that'll make your card. Okay, now for these pieces right here, let me get the card out just off camera a little bit. Okay, I've cut a piece here. Oh, let me refresh my memory here. Yes, it's a traditional uh, four, it's a uh, four and a half by five and three quarters. That's going to lay on top of here. You know, that's this background piece. So let's measure that again. It was four and a half by five and three quarters. So coming down would be four and three eighths by five and a half. And then I've cut a sheet of uh, watercolor paper. And th this watercolor paper actually is from my stash. We have some great watercolor paper from Stampin' Up. But I use the smooth side so I get, get a good stamping impression. The watercolor properties are still there. And it is cut smaller. So it is cut um, five and a fourth by four inches. Which brings me to this paper. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! Uh, pad of this graph paper, it's very inexpensive for a whole pad of it, and I tell you, it is just a lifesaver when it comes to stamping or crafting of any nature. It's got the, you know, a centering point. It's got the quarter-inch divisions, the measurements on each side. I love this pad. Anyway, I digress. Okay, so those are the pieces that you cut. In addition to that, you're going to use the die cuts that come from the uh, uh, Petal Palette bundle, which is still available through... Um, the end of this month, May of 2018, it will be going, the pieces will be going forward in the new catalog, thank heavens above, but uh, they won't be a bundle, so you won't get to save the 10%. So if you could take advantage now, it is a little bit of a higher price bundle, but it's a two stamp set bundle and you get the dies. So it retails out right now for $62. Of course, the pieces will be sold separately later. But um, I bought it in the clear mount, which is the, you know, it's on the uh, red rubber on the foam. 
but you use the clear mounts. So this is one piece. Now, what you're going to notice in my case, I've cut myself a, um, what you call it, a mask or a template for with the dies that I'm using on some cards so that when I'm using my Stamparatus, oh my gosh, if you don't have a Stamparatus, uh, it's like the Tim Holtz or Tiffany stamping platforms, but on steroid, it's got all the best features. Uh, you're going to want to stamp Stamparatus. Anyway, but I cut myself a template so that I can stamp quickly uh, as I need to. But here are the dies that come with the set. So you'll be able to cut out this flower. You'll be able to cut out this flower. You can cut out the little bird. And not this branch, but a pretty branch you'll be able to cut out. A lot of people are using this. And these little flowers here are just darling uh, pieces to add to cards. So those are the dies that come with it. So from those dies, here's the leaf branch that I cut out of um, Lemon Lime Twist. And then, of course, I've cut birds. And I cut myself a white one. I cut myself a black one. And then what I did was I cut myself a piece of paper that's about, um, I'm going to say about seven eighths inches wide by two and, let's measure and find out for sure, two and five eighths inches long by seven eighths inches wide. So two and five eighths by seven eighths. And what that is, is you can see these pieces. I'll be stamping on here and then we'll cut this in half to give ourselves a little border on each side. Am I out of focus? Hold on just a second. Yeah, there we go. Back in focus. Okay, so it'll leave a little border. And then this little piece is going to go behind it to square off the border all the way around. Okay, so let's lay these aside and get started on this. Now, I have kind of cheated because it was very difficult for you to be able to see me stamping Versamark to use the white embossing powder. Now, the... uh you know, my bottle's older than dirt kind of thing, but I just stamping up white detail embossing powder. We've got the white embossing powder now. That's what I used. And what I did was I selected the leaf stamp and the corner rose piece stamp, which is great. So let me show this corner rose piece, this leaf, and then from the other, uh, same set of stamps, but the other box, I used this uh, confetti dot which is just what Heather did on her card. Now the difference is she did not use this leaf that I can see. So what I did was I just stamped, I put this on a stamping pad. I know there's been a lot of discussion about if you put the picture on these things not standing. I just put a little bitty piece of tearaway tape on there. It rubs right off so I'm not worried about it ruining my uh, things. And that holds it on. Versa marked it and then I stamped this right in the corner. Okay, the next step I did, and see how this tape is staying on there, I put this leaf print on there, I mean leaf print, leaf, st stamped it with Versamark, did not stamp all the way down the stem, just left this blank, and Versamarked up this section, and then, because I couldn't really see where I was, but now you can see where I don't have to worry about my stem, I stamped that down, put my embossing powder on it, shook it off, and went and heat embossed that side. So you can still barely see it. Well, it's actually this side, but it was white on white embossing. Okay, for the other side of the card, again, that little piece of tape that's barely on there is holding this on. Again with Versamark. So I put that on, stamped it with Versamark, and then I stamped it full length, reverse marked it, came back and kind of connected up the bottom, reverse marked, and then I came over just a little bit and filled in. What you'll notice about this stamp is it's got a kind of point at the bottom, so it made for a pretty piece kind of raining down from the top. And the reason I did that, uh, Heather only did one stripe on her card, but her card was much smaller, so I wanted to give a little bit more on my card, and I didn't want it to be just a straight stripe, so that's what I did. If you can see here, this stripe ends a little lower. This one goes the full length. Okay, so now, shook my embossing powder on this. This is already heat embossed. Shook my embossing powder on here, shook it off. And then I went and used my gun. You can hear that. Uh, use my gun to heat dry that. So now I have a piece of uh, watercolor paper that has been stamped and heat embossed with just white embossing powder. Okay, now for the fun part. So what I did next, kind of following her instructions, let me see if I'm how I want to do this. Now, a lot of people will tell you, like, to keep your things straight, you can tape it down or whatever. I'm just, you know, go for it. 
so it's heat embossed on watercolor paper. So we're just going to kind of spray the paper with water. Okay, now we're going to take brush shows, which were new in the uh, special occasion catalog, and then they're going forward, and we're going to sprinkle some colors on there. I'm going to use yellow, and just a little bit goes a long way. So we've got the pretty sunshine yellow. And you can see here I'm just using a tack and making a hole in there. So I'm making like a little pepper shaker. Then I'm going to take the gamboge color. Oh my gosh, my favorite color. I'm going to sprinkle that on there over the roses. Just sprinkling. And then I'm going to come up and add a little drama up here. Maybe go do my corner. Okay, now you can see kind of how it's spreading. Now, the mossy green going to be kind of tricky. You can't see this at all, but I can. There's leaves right about there. And there's leaves right about there. And a little leaf right there. So we're going to do the corner with the green. Okay, now you can see that's already working in the water and it's mixing good. But if you want it to mix a little more, just hit it with a little more water. Not a lot. I'm saying not a lot, but I'm doing it. Okay, so that's doing a good job of mixing. And then I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more yellow here. I just love playing with this stuff. My hands have been colored for days now. Okay, so isn't that a hot mess? Now, hold on just a second. Let me run and get something. Hold on. I'll be right back. Now, what's sad is I ran to get a paper towel when, in fact, I have some right beside me. So, anyway. Okay, don't like that? Pick it up. Don't like that? Pick it up. So, you can just kind of pick up some of the colors, but you want to let them... You don't want to pick up too much. What is that dark thing right there? We're going to pick that up. Okay, so now when it's all said and done, we'll be able to take it off the white. But you can see how that's going to dry really pretty. Let me take a little bit of that green off there. Okay, now the hardest part of this for me is waiting for this to dry. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more yellow in the middle there. Okay, if you don't like how this is coming out, you can use your aqua brush and kind of move colors where you want. I personally just like letting it work. Let me take a little bit more of that dark color off, that dark green. Okay, so it's not exactly like this background, but you can see it's pretty close. If you want to add some more of the reddish color, we actually have a, a color that's called Brilliant Red. It's brilliant, all right. So I'm going to shake a little bit of that on there right there in the corner. Maybe a little bit up here. Okay. Right now it just looks like a hot mess of specks, but we're going to wet it with water. Oh, is that pretty or what? Okay. We're going to let that mix just a minute. And then I'm going to kind of take some of it off with a napkin. And you can see how pretty that adds some color there. Okay. So when you're pleased with how you have your color, oh, I can't stand it. I've got, I'm sorry, guys and gals. I've got to add just a little bit more right there. Just a little, just a little. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit more color right there. Oh yeah. Let that mix for a second. And they call this technique like an embossed resist because as you can see, the white is resisting the color. Okay. I might've taken off too much of that red too quickly. Hold on to me. Put a little, I'm going to put a little more back. Hold on. As you can see, water takes it away. You can add some more powder. So you can keep... Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. And let me just take, sop up a little bit of it this time. Oh, I love it. Okay. And then I'm just trying to keep those... I want to kind of keep that dot look right there. Okay, so that's how we made the background. And you can just play with it, and you can see, oh, I've kind of lost my green. So let me go in, add a little green back. And then you can just put some of this powder down and use your aqua pen to make the color. Yeah, there you go. Okay, kind of added back some of the green. Okay, so that's as easy it is to make the background and just play until you get what you like. See, I'm mixing that green with my fingers, and that is why I always have dirty fingers, or as I call them, my favorite art tools. Okay, okay, so there's that.
I love that sort of look. You can't ever duplicate the same thing, but they come out beautifully. Okay, now when you're playing with um, brush hose, they are a fine full pigment powder, meaning they are a lot of color. So you want to make sure, just because you sprinkled it and they're paper, you know, they're fine, fine, lightweight particles, you want to make sure you clean your mat all around because if that, when that stuff gets wet, the color will burst open and you will have pigment colors everywhere. So you want to make sure you clean your surface real good after you do that. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to dry this real quick off camera. I can't, you know, you can let it air dry. I can't. Hold on just a second while I dry it. Okay, we've got that dry, so let me bring back in my little mat so I can work on that. And we're going to bring back in all our pieces. Okay, let me sit down now because I think you can see me. Okay, we're going to start with the card base. I'm going to stamp my inside. And again, one of the things I love most about this set a lot of sets, it's like, oh, I love the artwork, but maybe I won't use the sayings. Oh, I love those sayings, but I might not use that artwork as often. This set, if you go on Pinterest, you will see, I'm going to say thousands, because I bet it's thousands. It's certainly hundreds and hundreds of examples made with this set, and they are all beautiful, very versatile set. Okay, so let's pick something for the inside. I used on this card, I used thank you for everything. Because I sent a lot of thank you cards, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out the for everything. Put it on a little block. Hold on. And again, you can, you know, you some people use um, chapstick or, you know, Burt's Bees lip balm or something to hold on. But I just use a piece of tape. Or in this case, I'm just going to take my chances. I'm aiming this toward me. Okay, we're just going to stamp this for everything. Didn't that come out pretty? I'm using tear and tape. Um, you know, that I have in my stash, so use whatever tape you like. Okay, so we're going to tape this in the middle of the card, and again, this is a nice large card, so it'll be a drama, uh, you know, nice good effect when somebody gets it. We're going to place that in the card, and remember, oh, I'm getting stuff on it. See that color? That little bit of color? We're not going to even act like, we don't even act like we saw that. What color? I don't see any color. Okay, so there's the inside. Okay, so for the outside of your card, let me see if I can make sure there's no color. Uh, this is going to just tape down out there. You know, the white layer goes down first. Okay, remember I've got a little bitty border, so I'm hoping I get it straight. Pretty good. Okay, then the black uh, border goes on. Now, one of the people that was using black and white, not one, about a dozen of them that I saw that was using black and white papers, they actually took their markers or their aqua pens or their blending pens, and they colored in just a few of the spots of white. So they had made their own custom match paper. But I wanted the black and white. Okay, we're going to layer that piece down. Oop, it's cut a little crooked, or I'm crooked, but it's not going to be too dramatic of a thing. Okay, so now we've got these layers done. So now we're going to layer up the next set of layers. If I use the word layers 1,200 times, do I get a prize? We've got the white layer for the base. We're going to layer this black on. I hope all this got cut straight enough. I don't know if, you, if I'm still on camera. Okay, white on white's hard to see. Okay, we got that down. And now, this was watercolor paper that's gotten a pretty good dose of water, so I'm going to use several strips. You can use this, or, you know, the tear and tape, or the fast fuse, which, of course, is going away, um, or glue, whatever you'd like. But you're going to want to make sure you put enough tape to hold this watercolor paper on there good. Okay, so now, whoop, 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 we're going to try to center that and see how there's a little bit more black showing. And I tell you, just the drama of color on black is so pretty. Now we're going to cattywampus this on here. Cattywampus, yes, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to put tape, tape, tape. And again, the adhesive of your choice. I just, I love the card that Heather made, but I tell you, I, this is, I saw a bunch of beautiful cards using the stamp set. Okay, so there's that cattywampus on there, pretty dramatic and yet pretty easy. Okay, now we're going to have to glue this on. Did I bring my glue over here? Yeah, I think I did. 
Now, let's see if my glue tip is actually going to work. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, just little dots of glue. Of course, Stampin' Up! makes a fine tip glue. I just, you know, I have a bad habit of using what's in my stash so I can spend more money on papers and stamp sets. Okay, now, we're going to lay this. You know, this is coming here, so I'm going to have this kind of set up here. Okay, now, I've got my little bird here. I've got a blank bird. Now, what I did to stamp this, let me grab my Stamparatus. You obviously can stamp it and then put your die cut over it and cut it, making sure you get it straight. But for me, um, because I'm, you know, maybe mass producing them or something, what I did was I put this in here. Okay, I'm going to go back over how I stamped the bird because of my original take. I was out off screen the entire time. So I'm using the Stamparatus. If you haven't seen it, it's a fabulous tool. Uh, it comes with two lids, so you can do up to four because these things pull out. So you can, hold on, these things pull out when they're straight up. And so you can actually place your stamps and turn, which I've done before, full color, you know, full color stamping. Anyway, I put my stamp on the lid, making sure that when I close it, I'm going to have enough room for my template to fit there, you know, generally speaking. And so then I'm going to ink this stamp. I'm going to stamp. I see my birds right there, so now I'm going to take my piece of paper, my template, and I'm putting it to where it is directly where it needs to be over the, where that stamp is. I'm going to take this magnet, which is super duper heavy, heavy magnet, hold my paper down, and now I'm going to take my die cut bird. Let's see if this is going to work. Hold on. That black border you see around there is where I stamped earlier and didn't. You know, I messed up. Anyway, I'm going to re-ink this. You see me using a little stamp pad, a little stamp pot. Okay, come over here, and then I'm going to stamp. And now you can see where I could take this bird out, put another one in, stamp, put another one in, stamp. Put, so I like making templates like this so that I can get my stamps right every time. That's how I made the bird. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so I've got my little bird, and he's, you know, just black on white. Now, what I did here, I pulled out some blue ink. And let's use the new Coastal Cabana. I'm going to squish some onto my lid. These are the new ink pads that just pop open like a compact and slide in. But I want that ink. So I'm going to go over here, use my aqua pen that I have. And we're just going to color in his wings a little bit. Just add a little color. And I colored in around his head a little bit. And around his little belly. I hope you can see that. So just adding a little color. Let me come add a little more intense color here. Okay, so some nice little color on him. Okay, now he's still a little damp, but he's not too wet, but he's a little damp. Okay, we, this one of my favorite, I love Stampin' Up! products, a lot of them. But these little things right here, some of my favorite finds. I have searched the world over for foam dots, and I tell you, these are... Some of the best that are out there, if not the best. Anyway, okay. I'm going to come over here and perch our little bird up about right there. Okay, now, we've got these three pieces. I say three pieces. Oh, there you are. Okay, so we've got those three pieces. This right here, the white one. Can you see that white on white? I hope you can. I'm going to come over here, find my stamp set. If you could see off camera this desk, it is the hottest mess you've ever seen. If I don't get this right the first two times, I've got some pre-stamped. We'll grab them. But right now, I'm going to try to put this on here. Feels like it's going to stick. But again, if it doesn't, I just use a little, a little bitty piece of tape to hold it on. Okay, I'm going to stamp that. Again, I'm using Memento ink. Now, excuse my head. Please, oh, oh, I smeared it. Hold on. Let's let's just turn it over and see if I can do a better job. You saw me rocking, huh? So there was going to be a good chance I smeared it. Okay. Let me see if I can do it a little bit quicker this time. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so we've got our thank you. We're going to take and put some tape on the back of it. This piece right here, we're going to cut in half. 
Isn't my scissors pretty? A friend of mine made that uh, for a Bible journaling class we went to, and she was selling them, and I bought them for my scissors. See how pretty those beads are on there? Now, they're not quite as pretty because i got some glue and stuff on them. Okay, now, aren't they pretty for my scissors? Okay, anyway, I digress. Okay, so we're going to put that down and give ourselves just a little border. Okay, take the other piece from what we just cut in half. Lay it down, give ourselves a little border. Okay, now we're going to run a piece of tape or glue, whatever your choice is, across the back. And then this other little piece we cut, we're going to try to center this on here. May have to do some trimming to give us a full-blown background. Okay, so now it's going to stand out from the card a little bit better. Okay. And we're going to run some tape. Oh, I love the drama of this card. Thank you, Heather, so much. Okay, now, on the one I did earlier, I did go in and take out some of the last of the last of the last little glitter dots that I have. I love these little things, but they are almost gone. But you definitely can add um, sequins or rhinestones or something there. But isn't that a beautiful little card? I love it. It's our card. Thank you, Heather. Did you notice I've got this crooked? I'm going to fix that in a minute. Okay, now, if you are interested in getting this bundle, you want to hurry. Isn't that gorgeous? So, what I've done is I'm showing you today, hopefully, you, you know, and again, just use whatever paper you've got in your stash. But here is my hostess code for the month of May. It's H-A-W-V-E-T-9-S. That's for the month of May. And remember, if you spend over $45 in merchandise, you're going to get four free card sets from me. It's Crafting Memories with Molly. Stampingup.net. Look me up by Molly Downing in Louisiana if you don't already have a demonstrator. Or, and, or you can look me up by Crafting Memories with Molly. Stampingup.net. So if you use this code, I'll send you those four free sets. But you do want to try to take advantage, I would think, of this set. You, the two-piece stamp set with the dies is $62. And I just think you'll use, a, use it over and over and over. So that's what I wanted to feature today. I hope you enjoyed this card. I want to thank Heather so much. Oh, I need to put something there, don't I? I want to thank Heather so much for uh, sharing her creativity with us. And hope you all enjoy it. Y'all have a great afternoon or day out there. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.